If you recently lost a loved one, um, did you know that there's a really simple way to avoid probate, especially for financial accounts in California? Uh, even if your loved one passed away without a living trust or an estate plan. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the California Small Estate Affidavit. I'm gonna walk you through whether or not the account or the asset qualifies for the affidavit, how to use it, and also the benefits of using it. So let's get started. Um, but before we dive in, if you haven't already, uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss any of our upcoming videos filled with free estate planning tips. And by the way, my name is Edmund Yan. I am a living trust lawyer. I've helped hundreds of families and I've taught over 3,000 people how to do it themselves to make sure that uh, their house, their financial accounts avoid probate and goes to the ones that they love when they pass away. So I'm excited today to share uh, some of my tips and tricks with you today regarding the small estate affidavit. If you own a home and you wanna learn the entire process of how to make a living trust the right way without hiring a lawyer and without uh, uh, having the risk of your family, your children having to need a small estate affidavit in the future, uh, then check out my free trust class at freetrustclass.com to start planning for your family. You can find the link on the bottom of this video. Really quick legal disclaimer, I'm not your lawyer. I'm not giving you any legal advice. All of this is just information. You should talk to a lawyer if you have any specific legal questions. So here are some of the questions that we're gonna go through today. Uh, number one, what is the small estate affidavit? Uh, do you qualify to use it? How do you use it to transfer title of properties like bank accounts? What do you do uh, if the financial institution does not accept the affidavit? And how do you actually fill it out and submit it to the financial institution? So those are all the questions that we're gonna go through today. This is gonna be pretty much a comprehensive uh, video and a step-by-step -step guide on how to use the California Small Estate Affidavit. So the first question is, what is this affidavit? Well, it's a legal document that allows for a very simplified process of handling um, someone who passed away his assets or her assets uh, if those assets are considered small in value. And so this affidavit is often used as an alternative to the traditional probate process. So it actually helps you avoid probate if you qualify to use it, which is it's gonna save you a lot of time and money. And so the small estate affidavit uh, typically requires the person seeking to get the money or seeking to get the assets to provide certain information about the deceased person's assets um, debts as well as beneficiaries. Um, in short, a small estate affidavit is a really valuable tool uh, that can help you avoid probate without the need of setting up a trust if your estates are small in value. This does not replace a trust. Uh, in fact, we don't ever want to use a small estate affidavit, but the small estate affidavit is there as a tool to use if someone didn't plan ahead, didn't have a trust, didn't have a, a will, or didn't have anything, and now uh, things need to be done. So remember that these rules vary state by state. In this video, I'm gonna talk specifically about California. Okay, so it's a really good idea to find a video specifically for your estate uh, or get legal advice from an estate planning uh, professional to ensure that uh, these procedures are followed legally. Now, uh, if you live in California and you're using the small estate affidavit, go to this website right now because what I'll be sharing today is the same uh, information, okay? I'm just making it into the video to help you guys, uh, but all the information can be done there. And at the end of this video, you can fast forward if you'd like, but at the end of this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to fill out the small estate affidavit. Okay, so check out this uh, link. It's on the bottom of this video. So before you start putting together your small estate affidavit, make sure you qualify to use this process. So number one, the estate needs to be small, which means it's valued under either 166,000 or 185 so thousand dollars. So what does that mean? So to be considered small, uh, the estate must be valued under, for example, if the person that you're helping uh, distribute the assets or receive the assets from that person died on April 1st, 2022 or later, the estate is small if it's valued at 184 uh, and a half thousand or less. 
Okay, so what that means is uh, if you're trying to uh, get, uh, for example, bank accounts, and let's say there's three bank accounts that someone uh, left you, uh, and let's say the bank accounts are worth $100,000 combined, okay, for all three, then you can use the small estate affidavit. However, if this person died on April 1st, 2022 or later, and they have over $845,000, in those accounts that you're trying to get a hold of, then you can't use this. So for example, if there's three accounts, all three accounts adds up to 200,000 or 300,000 or a million dollars, you cannot use a small estate affidavit. Legally, you would have to go through probate. Okay, so uh, the question is, out of all the assets that you're trying to use a small, a small estate affidavit for, uh, in, in the, is the value when combined, when totaled up, when added up, is it less than 185,000? If the answer is yes, then you can use a small estate affidavit. Generally speaking, if the answer is no, then you'll have to go through probate court. Now, if this person died before April 1st, 2022, then that uh, value is much lower. It's at 166 or so thousand dollars. So uh, make sure you understand these rules before you put together a small estate affidavit. Now, another thing to know is that you cannot use this type of affidavit to transfer real estate. Okay, so in California, if you, if the person who died you uh, owned a single family home as their primary residence, for example, they would mo you would most likely have to go through probate. Okay, talk to a probate attorney uh, to, to, to make sure um, if, if that's the case, but generally speaking, that's the case. So if you do have uh, real property right now in California, you should definitely set up a trust so your kids don't have to end up in probate because for example, a million dollar home in California, probate is about $46,000. Half of it goes to the, to the attorney, half of it goes to the, uh, to the personal representative. So it's, it's very, very expensive and so we wanna make sure we avoid probate for our family. Uh, now another criteria to use the small estate affidavit is there, there cannot be any formal probate cases opened yet for that person. You can't use the small estate affidavit if there's already a probate case open on that person's estate. If there is, you need to get written permission from the personal representative to use the affidavit. So you have to go through the probate court in order to use the affidavit. You can't just go and, and, and get the account yourself. You have to go through the probate process. Another thing is you have to wait at least 40 days have passed since that person died in order to submit the small estate affidavit to the financial institution to get the property. So if you do qualify for using a small estate affidavit to get those assets from the deceased person to yourself or to somebody else, how do you use the small estate affidavit to transfer property? Uh, number one, uh, so I'm gonna share uh, three or four steps here. Step number one is gather documents that you need. You're gonna need a certified copy of the death certificate. That's number one. So you have to wait until the certified copy of the death certificate arrives. Uh, I, I recommend that you get at least 10 copies, cert certified copies of the death certificate because you never know how, how many you need, uh, but 10 is usually a good amount. You also need proof that the decedent owned the property, like the bank account. So find proof of that, okay? And then also proof of your identity, like your driver's license, because the financial institution is gonna need it. Step number two is to fill out the affidavit. You're gonna ask the company or the institution like the bank that has the account that, you're, that uh, you want uh, if they have an affidavit for you to fill out and use. Some banks do, so you can just go to them. Uh, many companies and institutions have their own and um, you will want to use their version because they're only gonna accept their version. For a lot of banks, uh, they, uh, they would need you to fill it out yourself um, but for some banks, they would have you fill it out or fill out an additional um, affidavit that they have. So um, also when you're filling out the affidavit, you can either list all the properties that you're trying to get a hold of in one affidavit or use a different affidavit for each item of property. So for example, if there's two bank accounts, uh, you can put both of those bank accounts into that affidavit. My recommendation is to split it. Okay, it's always easier to split it. Uh, do one affidavit for uh, each bank account that, that you're trying to uh, gather. Step number three, 
to using the small state affidavit is to attach the, any necessary documents to the affidavit. For example, the certified copy of the death certificate, proof that it's didn't own the property, like any bank statements, receipts, stock certificate certificates, especially if you're trying to get stocks um, that are valued under the minimum threshold or maximum threshold, and also proof of your identity, driver's license, passport, make sure it's not expired. Uh, and if the person owned real estate in California, you'll need to attach an inventory and appraisal uh, to the affidavit. Now, step number four is to have the affidavit notarized. Okay, legally, you're, you are not required to have the affidavit notarized, but a lot of institutions, most of them will ask you to do so. So make sure you notarize it. And if there are other people entitled to inherit the property, they must also sign the affidavit. So for example, if um, the decedent left two children without a wife or a husband, and the two children are the rightful heirs of everything, the affidavit needs to be signed by both of those kids because they're both gonna receive an equal share of that uh, account or asset. This, shows, um, th uh, this also shows that everyone agrees that the property listed on your affidavit can be transferred to the person that is applying. All right, now, uh, let's see here. Step number five is to take the affidavit to the person or the company that has the property. So once you fill it out, notarized it, submit it to the bank, the person, the company to get that property. So what, sh what should I do if they will not accept the affidavit? Sometimes banks or institutions, they're not familiar with the probate process or laws in California, especially if it's a national uh, bank. And so, uh, I don't know why that is. Uh, it's 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 mind-boggling to me that they don't uh, train their employees. Um, but uh, a lot of times, from what I've seen, is that you're going to submit the small estate affidavit to them, and and they're going to say, "We don't accept this. Uh, you need to go to probate. You need to get a, a letters from probate court, um, which means that you filed a petition in probate, and the probate court is going to order." you as the appointed uh, personal representative and and so they need those legal documents from a judge uh, from you they would say that however when you look at the california probate code especially um, probate code uh, 13100 and 13106 those uh, provisions say that we don't need letters from probate we don't need to go to probate court in order to get financial accounts small enough uh, that's under the maximum threshold allowed um, and it's not necessary and so they don't know that and so they're gonna tell you hey go get letters now if that happens what happens what sometimes what happens is number one you have to write a letter to them um, outlining the law and, and stating exactly why you don't need to go to probate and then uh, how, and then submit that letter along with the small state affidavit to the uh, bank to the institution uh, sometimes uh, what people do is they would have an attorney do it for them so they ha they would have an attorney uh, do it for them and usually the banks would then say yes uh, because the banks don't want to do anything that would put themselves in a high risk of liability for example if you had submitted something and the bank gave you a bunch of money and now someone else is suing the bank saying hey the bank shouldn't have given it to them because that person wasn't entitled to it and so banks don't want to put themselves in that sort of uh, risk and liability situation. And so they would uh, be more open and comfortable when an attorney presents the small state affidavit to them instead of just anybody. Uh, and so sometimes people will reach out to me and I would help them. Uh, because of my caseload and uh, my lack of time these days, uh, I am not taking on those matters. And so if you're watching this, uh, I would not be able to help you, but uh, if you wrote a letter to them um, and explaining the law to them, they, they might be able to help you. So definitely cite California Probate Code sections 13100 and 13106. Okay, so those are uh, really good ones to cite to say, hey, I don't need to go to probate court. Give me the money. <laughs> Give me the money. Uh, and so uh, follow that approach or hire an attorney to help you do that. And again, uh, I'm not helping clients right now, and so uh, please do not contact me because unfortunately I would have to cancel the consultation because I'm not helping 
uh, with small estate affidavits at the moment uh, due to my workload. So how do you fill out the affidavit? So now that we've um, come to this point, uh, you're, you're probably watching this because you qualify to use the small state affidavit and now you're you're trying to figure out how to do it. So this is how you do it, okay? First thing uh, you should do is down uh, click the link below. Uh, there's, there's a link below that's provided from eForms. eForms has a f uh, free small state affidavit that you could use uh, that's updated for deaths that occurred uh, April 1st, 2022 or after. And so use that one. If someone died before April 1st, 2022, you wanna find the one before that uh, and, and you can easily find it online. So, but if, if you're dealing with the death after April 1st, 2022, you can use that small state affidavit form. So once you open it, it's gonna look like this, okay? So let me go over it with you. The first thing you're gonna do uh, is you're gonna put the decedent's name. Decedent is the person who died. Make sure you put in uh, their full legal name as it appears on the death certificate. That's really important. Uh, if there's AKAs, you, you, you might wanna add some AKAs in the death certificate and, and put that here as well. And uh, you have to put also the date of death. So what's the date of death? Put that there. Uh, and also uh, the county in which the person died. Okay, so you're gonna put that there as well. Uh, and then the second question uh, is, is not really something you fill in, but then here in this affidavit, you're basically saying to the world, hey, I am, I am saying that everything that uh, is written on this paper is true. And so this is an affidavit. So if you lie, you can be prosecuted. So make sure that uh, you agree with every single statement here. So you're basically saying yes to every single statement. So statement number two says, at least 40 days have, have passed since that person died. And then you need to attach that person's death certificate to verify. So you'll do that. And then uh, number three has a question that you have to check one. Uh, you either check no proceeding is now being or has been conducted in California for administration. This means that no probate has been started. And so you're probably in that situation, so click that. If you're in the second situation where uh, the decedent's personal representative has consented in writing to the payment transfer or delivery uh, of this property, to you, then you want to check that as well. But again, if probate has started, you need to uh, get the written consent of the personal representative before you can sign, notarize, and submit this to the uh, institution, okay? And then number four is you're agreeing to the fact that the current gross fair market value of the decedent's real or personal property in California, exceeding the property described in section 13, uh, 050 of the California Probate Code does not exceed 184,000 uh, $184, So basically you're, you're telling them that there's nothing, uh, you know, based on the totality of the assets, uh, all of these assets that are potentially subject to probate does not exceed $185,000. Cars are not uh, part of that calculation. So take a look at California Probate Code uh, 13, 050 uh, to uh, double check uh, the valuation just because you have to calculate it um, precisely, okay? So that's the first part. Second part is uh, number five, check one of these. An inventory and appraisal of the real property included in the student's estate is attached or there's no real property in the estate. So you're probably gonna select number two because if there is real estate then most likely um, you should talk to a probate attorney to go through probate. The following property, number six, is to be paid, transferred, or delivered to the undersigned under the provisions of the California Probate Code, section 13100. Uh, so uh, this is where you most likely are, are gonna put your name, okay? Uh, this is uh, really important, okay? You wanna make sure that you put your full legal name here Okay, so put your full legal name here. Uh, make sure that you at least have your first and last name as the legal name because they're gonna check your ID and it needs to match your ID. So uh, uh, look at your driver's license really quickly. Pull it out while, while you're filling this out. Pull it out and write it verbatim, okay? Don't add to it. So for example, if your middle initial is V, but your middle name is Vict Victor or Vincent, don't put Victor and Vincent if your driver's license doesn't have Victor or Vincent, okay? Number seven, the successor of the decedent 
uh, as defined in Cal the California Probate Code is or are. So this, uh, this line means who are the rightful heirs of this account? Uh, and so you have to look at the probate code and you have to make sure that you or you and somebody else uh, is actually entitled to uh, this money or this account. So uh, for example, if the decedent left two children, not married, both children will have an equal interest in the, uh, in the, uh, in, in the account most likely. And so uh, you would put both of their names. Okay, make sure it's their, their full legal names. And number eight, the defiant or declarant, you have to check one, is or are the successors of the decedent as defined in the probate code to the decedent's interest in the described property or they're, the authori they're authorized under the probate code to act on behalf of those successors uh, to uh, get the property. So uh, if you are entitled to uh, be the beneficiary, be the heir of that account, then you would select box number one. You would select box number two in a situation where, for example, if the people who are entitled to receive this account, for example, are minors or is a minor, then and you're the legal guardian for that person, then you would check box number two. Or if the person who's entitled to this money is incapacitated and you are the legal uh, guardian, conservator for, for, for that person, then you would uh, fill out box number two. But for most people, it would be box number one. Number nine, no other person has a superior right to the interest of, this, uh, of the decedent in the described property. Uh, so you're verifying that you or you and someone else are entitled to this property. Nobody else is entitled to this property according to the law. And 10, the affiant or declarant requests that the property uh, to be paid, delivered, or transferred to the affiant or declarant. So you're basically saying, uh, I want this account to be transferred to me. And, and then uh, you would sign under penalty of perjury. So if you do not understand what any of uh, this form means, uh, if there's any bullet points that you're like, hey, I don't know if I'm answering this correctly, I would not sign this. Okay, you have to be absolutely sure that you're telling the truth. Ignorance uh, is not gonna get you away from uh, penalty of perjury. A lot of times it's very hard. And so and you have to be 100% sure that, uh, that you're telling the truth, okay? And so you have the duty to uh, make sure that there's no other accounts out there that uh, combined is under the maximum threshold allowed to use the small state affidavit and that you are entitled to this asset okay so you put your full name and your date here uh, you would also sign this uh, and so the next part is where uh, you get it notarized okay so this needs to be notarized and so you're gonna get this notarized by a notary uh, before you submit this so that's the small state affidavit it's, it's really straightforward uh, if you have any questions you should definitely talk to a uh, probate attorney or an estate planning attorney to help you uh, and like I mentioned uh, we're no longer taking on small estate affidavit matters and so I wouldn't be able to personally help you but I hope that this helped I hope that this information was uh, useful to you uh, and uh, if you get rejected the first time with the affidavit you can do it again uh, and so if, if the bank says, hey, you need this information, then, then you can execute and sign and notarize a new one to uh, submit it to the bank. And so uh, you, can, you can try multiple times uh, to uh, get it right. But uh, if you have any questions, I do recommend that you speak to an attorney uh, because uh, of all these legal issues that could arise that you are unaware of. And so uh, if you have any concerns, worries, or questions, Talk to an attorney as soon as possible, okay? Now, uh, hopefully your family will never have to use a small state affidavit. Small state affidavit is the last thing that anybody should use and what you should be doing with for your family is making an estate plan. And I have a free uh, living trust class that you can enroll in to uh, check out the whole process. The, the class is about an hour long where I walk you through step-by-step step the entire trust uh, making process. And then at the end of the class, if you want, uh, if you want uh, 
me to walk you through how to make your own estate plan, uh, then you can enroll in my course to learn how to do it yourself. So check out my free class to make sure that uh, you and your family never ever want, um, need to use a small estate affidavit, that everything is taken care of, that your accounts have beneficiaries or the accounts are put into a living trust for your kids, okay? So check out my free class if you'd like. Again, my goal isn't to sell you my legal services. In fact, I'm telling you guys, don't call me because I probably won't be able to help you with a small estate affidavit. If you want to set up a living trust, I could help you, but for a lot of families, uh, you can do it yourself. So if you want to learn how to do it yourself, check out my free trust class at freetrustclass.com. The link is on the bottom of this video. And before uh, I, I leave, I, I, I want to share this wonderful psalm with you. This is a psalm from the Bible, Psalm 25, 15. My eyes are always on the Lord, for he will pull my feet out of the net. So the reason why I want to share this with you is because uh, some of you who are watching this probably lost a loved one, a friend or a family member, and uh, you're probably confused about what to do. My recommendation is to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the one who came, who died on the cross for our sins to give us eternal life. And eternal life is not just heaven, okay? Eternal life is not us living now and we have to wait until we die to have eternal life with God. Eternal life starts now. You can have a deep, intimate, loving relationship with your Creator with your Heavenly Father, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. And so I wanna encourage you guys, uh, especially if, if you're in a situation where you feel lost right now, try not to uh, rely on what the world could provide. First start in prayer, really close your eyes and ask Jesus, even if you don't believe in him, okay? Try this, ask Jesus to help, okay? Just talk to him and tell him Hey God, hey Jesus, I've tried all my life to do things my way. Uh, I am so scared right now. I'm so worried. Help me. I surrender to you. Tell me what to do for the rest of my life. That's exactly the prayer that I prayed about four years ago when I was at the lowest point of my life. Um, I didn't even want to be a lawyer anymore. I had no purpose in life. I had anxiety, depression, uh, stress. Uh, no purpose whatsoever. Uh, I looked put together on the outside, but inside I was completely lost. And so one night I told God, God, I prayed these selfish prayers to you all, all my life. I didn't really spend time to get to know you. I didn't read the Bible, um, but I basically treated you like a genie uh, all my life. Uh, I don't want that anymore. You tell me exactly what you want me to do in my life. I surrender it to you. I'm sorry for my sins. From that point on, for some reason, well, I know what the reason is, but at that time I was really surprised that the Lord would actually answer me right away. Like right away I just felt this peace and this love from God, knowing that no matter what the devil throws our way, no matter what the consequences of sin uh, um, results in our lives, we have our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, to fall upon and to trust and to walk with all the days of our lives. And the promises of God are real, okay? And so um, I, I uh, encourage you guys to seek Jesus uh, during this time and keep your eyes on him. Just talk to him. He's gonna pull you out. Uh, he's gonna show you, um, you know, why they're suffering in the world. He's gonna show you uh, what true love looks like. And so uh, I pray that uh, you experience the grace and the mercy and the love of Jesus. All right, so if you have any questions for me about the small estate affidavit, put it down in the comments below. Uh, I can't promise I'm gonna answer them, but your questions will give us really good insight on how to improve our videos. And so thank you for all your feedback. Uh, right now, I think we're at 9,000 subscribers and we're almost at 10,000. It's incredible. And to give you another testimony about God, uh, as I was praying one day, Jesus told me, hey, you should go on YouTube. You should teach people how to do their own estate plan for free. 
and you should create a course uh, to teach people step by step how to do it for a small fee. And at the time, I I was like, why should I do that? It's such a waste of time. Um, but but now that uh, I've been doing this for almost two years, I, I understand why. It's because I know that a lot of you you don't have the budget to re- hire a, a good attorney to help you. Uh, and you don't want to, some of you might not want to even work with an attorney because of, um, because of how other attorneys make you feel, and I completely get that. And so my goal here is to give you as much free information as I can in order to help you guys do it yourself. Okay, so uh, I want to encourage you guys to seek the Lord because He helps you in every single area of your life, every single area. He wants you to repent of your sins. He wants you to come to Him with repentance and let him know that you need him uh, because we all need him Uh, we are just human we can't do this ourselves Uh, and so we need jesus uh, in our lives and i promise you when you truly surrender to him your old life is going to go away but this new life you're going to experience is going to be so wonderful my wife and i you know both gave our lives to, to christ few years ago and our lives have been so rich uh, and it's taught us how to overcome suffering and how to use suffering as a way to bring us closer to God and, and, and refine ourselves, refine our character, refine our endurance and refine our uh, ability to love others. And so only goodness comes when you give your life to Christ. So I encourage you to do that. Uh, love you guys. Uh, God bless you, uh, and I will see you in the next video.